I think there's sort of known and unknown, right? There's situations where if you know if a, if a service is available, you know what the results can be. So in the case of a, of a diagnostic device, you can save lives yeah. by actually having that available, whereas today it's not available. So those, I think the ones that are harder are the ones that are more unknown. So you're having to, you know, uh, they're not a proven approach. So that in those cases, you have to set your own metrics uh, and figure out what standards you're going you're gonna to measure against. Or, or where there are four products. For example, if Biosense was doing, somebody else is doing and saying, I'm 10% cheaper or 5% sure. cheaper, then it's very difficult to prove. Yeah. Uh, and there is, so for example, in Hippocampus or in our little audience, we have those challenges. Uh, Hippocampus probably better off because you have more rural. So the moment he says Hippocampus is making impact, uh, he probably can actually make that, though he is then competing against the government infrastructure, which we know is lovely, so therefore he will score. When we actually talk about little audience, we have to do 10 times more explanation uh, because it's actually, while it is a low income state, etc., but it's still urban. And there will be some local competition somewhere. Sure. Maybe at a chain level you can get away. But then this becomes a very marginal investment on impacts, right? So if you are asking me, or if I look at my this thing, what are the marginal investment on the impacts, side? Yes. There will be these in education, etc., which is reasonably, and anybody can say this is an impact. So those I would qualify upfront that they are always marginal cases. And Jayesh would agree as an investment committee member at Avishka, massively debated investment. Uh, just scrape through. Mm -hmm. So, are, are there? This is the last question before we open up to the audience. But are there investments that you've made that you regret? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, one with the private limited. Jayesh will regret. So would I. Sunk in five and a half million dollars right now, trying to sell the company, break piece by piece, break motor, machine. So yeah, five and a half million down down the drain. We could have saved after one and a half million. But we kept trying to assume well, it was a pretty stupid thing. I think the, my answer to that would be it's always easy in 2020 hindsight to go, okay, we want to shift have done that. Um, and I think we've learned some lessons from it, but I, I think it's hard to double, you know, say, well, if we were to do it again, of course we wouldn't invest in that thing. But an example, an example that we have found is a common um, element that we're much more precarious about now is single founder teams. We like teams, not single founder teams. Right. And we found that we'll do it once in a while, but we really look hard at it. We, we, we learned the hard way mm -hmm. that it's very hard to bring in a founder later. You can do it, but it's hard. So if you, it's better to have that team in place first. So that's an example of a learning. I wouldn't say, you know, we... Yeah. Right. Any marginal impact investments? Well, we have some businesses that have pivoted and have to survive, have had to adapt in their their market. One of the big challenges we, we face, and most I'd say most venture investors, if you ask them in India, not just impact investors, but venture investors would say, we're going for the masses. We're not starting with that. We're starting with higher income people who can pay a premium for something. I mean, it's an Uber approach, right? You start with black and then you, you work your way down to you know, with the with the, the go or the shared Uber, whatever it is, like and you're getting you're getting lesser and lesser income drivers or smaller smaller cars. So the traditional approach is go build a product where you're kind of skim and you specialize, you've got a unique thing, make you know, serve a higher income audience. But the long term goal is, you know, to go to the masses. And I think Airtel probably worked that way as well, to a certain degree, right? They probably most people could afford a phone, were well off to start with, but then the economics sort of pushed it down so that it became something that everyone did. So we debate sometimes this question of, will we invest in a company that is not focused completely on, or mostly on, the low income populations to start, but they have, because to bootstrap, they need to have a certain margin in their business or some approach where they would then, but in a year or two years, they really can get that, that, that model to the point that they can then scale it out to much more. And the risk of that is they never do it. Yeah, right. Um, but in some ways, that you know could be. So we've looked at a few. We looked at some models. And we have a few in our portfolio that, that have that approach. That they're working a little higher income um, because they're building the model out. But their goal is to actually even take it down further over time. So is venture capital the right model for the kind of investments and the kind of expectations we have from these investments for the term impact investing? Well, I genuinely believe now that venture capital is the wrong model for impact investing. Can you say more about that? 
See the whole idea of actually making an investment, building an enterprise, changing people's <coughs> life, and retaining capital at twenty percent sounds stupid in ten years. It actually just is an unintelligent idea. Uh, and therefore, to me, actually, the whole idea of venture capital itself is a big question within venture capital. Okay, we are trying to ape a model for a very unique uh, activity that we are trying to achieve, and we are believing that this is the right model. The whole two twenty approach is questionable. The pricing, the two is basically the fee that we charge in twenty, the profit share that we do. Uh, then, then suddenly DFIs have come up with the idea of can we associate your carry to the impact that you are making, but then you don't know how the impact is being measured. So it's actually a completely strange discussion we get into all the time, and because everybody then realizes we cannot do it, so we keep moving forward. But really, the idea that can you actually invest in a company, uh, make impact, generate twenty percent returns, and do it all in ten years' time, is that really a logical uh, way? To make them is probably open funds. We we actually have just been very short-sighted in the way, and I think the short-sightedness are not at our level. We are actually massively constrained. Short-sightedness is at the LP level, and if I will have to make a recommendation to you at GS, I would want the biggest LPs, the IFCs, the CDC, here below, all the DFIs, and all the rich guys, all the pension funds, sitting there and ask you, do you guys want to make a change? And you genuinely believe 20% return can be generated while making a change. If you believe so, why are you insisting on a seven-year fund? Why the hell can you ask Sidney? Why are you insisting on an eight-year fund? You must be talking about 15 years, 17 years, 20 years because you got guys have got long-term money. Why the hell should we be able to deliver and bring the change in the world in five, seven years? That's really the point. And the institutions like USAID and the GS Summit should actually push that lever. We, I don't have the capability, I actually go and ask by the way, but then they throw me out. So <laughs> the question is, you guys have it and I will stand up as a GP and make a presentation and tell that you guys are completely mistaken about what you are expecting from us. It's a wrong thing. I will lie because you are asking me to lie, so I will keep lying. But the fact is, I will deliver 20% return by actually making the changes is just not possible. Because in India, private equity guys investing in the top of the pie has not been able to deliver that. How the hell do I deliver it out of Jharkhand? I mean, some of this sounds like the U.S. subprime market to me. It's focus, focus. <laughs> so, what, one of the things that, um, because and most of you would know this, is that because of regulation issues, if you have foreign money, it's very difficult to do anything except equity um, for investing. And um, we we've actually just through Capri, which is another program we have, we've, we've now sponsored a bunch of three new funds: two in Africa, one in Latin America. And those funds, we, we weren't specific whether they're taking more of a venture capital approach or uh, a debt approach or, or venture debt or other kinds of things. So it turns out three of them are mezzanine debt. And we think actually we would love to be able to do other kinds of investing in India to have impact in really interesting businesses and have a reasonable return. But we can't be, that's a restriction we have in India. Sure. We, we, everyone knows about it, but I'm saying that's, that's an issue I would bring up that we're limited, so we have to have sort of potentially higher returns because we're taking higher risk. But actually I'll go through again and say the product is not really important, it's actually the structure which is a problem. Well, and I agree with you too, the open, the open first close one. But just as a structure, coming back to your this, of like the subprime market, I think when investors expect the starting point as a return, which is unrealistic, I think it doesn't matter whether you're in the impact business or in other businesses. I mean, even in regular venture capital all over the world, hasn't returned that kind of money over a period of time. So they take the lot of funds. But you, you are actually pushed into a niche category, and, and you will actually be tarred in one second, while the other side is actually being tarred slowly. So the point is, you will go out of the window faster than anybody else, because you will be proven faster that you are in, in, in inefficient and useless, actually. That's why I'm actually more worried. That, and more importantly, let me not worry about their money being made or not made. I am more worried about are we being honest about what we are saying because I am actually also making a commitment and I would want to live up to my commitment but am I actually doing the right thing and the reason I actually changed my own strategy is because I wanted to be honest to the commitments I am making because these are documented commitments and people will revisit them. The challenge is if I want to be honest then I have to completely leave everything that I genuinely believe in. Why would I not do Rang Sutra? Why should I not create 100 Rang Sutras? And if I can create 100 Rang Sutras, I need a different structure. But I need that larger amount of capital to have the large team I have. I mean, if I have $10 million, I can only have four people. 
But if I have $200 million, I have 35 people with experiences varying from 30 to 40 years. Now, I need that to actually make a difference. If I don't have that, I will not be able to make a difference. As most of you will realize, it's very difficult to make an impact in a company which is far flung with a small team. It's just very difficult. And as, since you guys are in third year and I'm actually running some of my sixth fund, I can tell you that as the number of companies will go up, and when you will start seeing China, one is going bankrupt, the other is going for an IPO, the third is going, just the Equitas IPO has consumed three people full time signing. And post the IPO, we still have three people actually all across the world just coordinating signings. There are some 30,000 signatures we have to put in, and this is all done in Mauritius. And we have to coordinate. Just incredible, actually, the amount of work one single IPO can make you do. So think about it if you will have a portfolio like me with 50 companies with all stages going bankrupt, putting scaling, and all falling on your floor. What kind of manpower you need? And those are challenges that investors are not willing to take into account right now. The DFI is the only guys who understand it. They actually understand because they have gone through some lot of blow ups themselves. Uh, but again, that strategic decision making is such that probably somebody at the top might understand it, but it doesn't percolate down in the decision making. Maybe we have time for one one last question. Yes. So, I have one question: What's it going to be the time frame for an entrepreneur to actually return the kind of impact? Because you're still talking about it in the financing terms and venture capitalists. <laughs> and if even if we give back the impact which you guys want, there a lot of pivots which happen as we are talking about failures. The impact might differ. I in the conference itself, when I was like I presented myself to a couple of people. Some said security is impact, some consider security not to be an impact. It's just a mainstream thing. So what do you guys consider as an impact? Or is there a criteria for impact where education and energy are the only impact and safety and security aren't? And if there is, so what's your viewpoint of that? For us, impact is only in case you're focusing so hard. Everybody defines impact like you are defining something. Everything in the world is impact. And otherwise, what I define as impact. So first and foremost, there is no debate on that. What you are doing is impact, but does it fit into my fund mandate? Uh, I can tell you very upfront, it will not fit because I am actually only looking at lower income, low and income and poor as the population. Now you can come to me and say, I have a product which is only for rich people, but it is produced by the poor people. So if you can get your security product designed, produced, manufactured by artisans in uh, this thing and sell it to the richest people, I would actually instantly invest. So you will have to fit it into it, our strategy, but we actually have mandates and we can actually tell you the mandate. It will be difficult for you sometimes to fit in and therefore you should not take our money. Uh, you will have to actually make that choice. It doesn't matter what we say. You will have to actually make a decision of what's more important for you. Uh, whether you want to be defined as impact or not is also actually a decision you should make up front. Yeah, there isn't one size fits all. When someone says they're an impact investor, it doesn't mean some people are the impact investor because they want the planet to be cleaner. Other person is an impact investor because they want poverty to be less. Another impact investor wants there to be better health care. Okay, so it's a broad term, and then you have to get into specifics because each fund and each investor has a, sort of a, a sphere of definition. Time frame is something which I wanted to know. Other thing. Right now, the way we are all structured, from the time you take money, seven years is the maximum that you should think about returning. It also depends on what time of the fund you are raising money. So if any of you are smart in fundraising, you should try to take money from any of us when we are in the first two years of our funds. If we are in the third year, try to not take money from us. I am in the fifth year right now, so anybody trying to take money from us should try to reject me as many times as possible. But I write a very big check, so probably will not be able to it's actually a game. I know you should not take my money, so I actually go and convince people not to take my money, and then I tell them I'll give you a very big check. So, no. <laughs> Increase the greed quantum to such a level that they can't say no. That's basically what it is. The way that we look at it, just to answer, is, is we always look at from investment in the first five years. Um, we look at a target for that, realizing that hopefully if they're successful, that's going to continue. But that's sort of the, the window that we look at when we, when we kind of at, look at the, the potential impact. Five to seven years for an impact is not really a much period, right? No, but, that, but that's the point. Is that you're you're not saying this is your your expectation is it's going to continue to go from there. But that's the period that you're focused on, on sort of having some measurement around. Right, we're out of time. Thank you so much. A warm round of applause for our great. Thank you so much.